The country that pays immigrants $34,000 to leave. That's a lot of money. This is Sweden. The country that will pay immigrants $34,000 to go back home. Why would you even place people to live here? Wait, you Sweden does this? Placed us in one area and then they just put all the bad things on us. We are like the scapegoat. So Sweden has never been like this uh, blue, white, blonde country. The idea of a national state is old. We have as many bombings per capita as in Mexico. Two people are dead in a knife attack at an IKEA store in Sweden. Well, Mohammed, you come into up here. I heard my man in Sweden. Holy crap! We begin to experience a surge in gang violence, drug trafficking, shootings, grenade explosions, gang rapes, and other violent crimes from countries like Syria, Afghanistan, and Iraq, leading the Swedish public to wonder if integration was possible and if the benefits of importing third world migrants were worth the diversity and cheap labor they brought. With some Swedish politicians using the rise in crime to argue for less open borders, others fear it may lead to unjust vilification of many peaceful, productive See, migrants. Uh, hold up, okay. Life Listen up, guys. Listen. Oh, oh, dude, this this bothers this bothers me so much. This bothers me so much. Okay, listen. It is not about the race of the immigrants. There are plenty of immigrants from countries that are willing to like be a part of the new country. That's the important part. The important part is not is not like is not like necessarily where you're from and like what your race is and like the, what's important is like what culture you're willing to like adopt into. And I know it's kind of a hot take that like culture is uh, is is different and it matters, but it does. And the, the thing is, is when you do this, OK, and, and here's the problem. You have people that they're like, oh, we're such nice people. We're going to allow everyone in because, you know, like we're so compassionate. We're like so compassionate and we care so much about, you know, people and this is actually what they're saying, but they're not. They're, th this is literally what they're they're saying. They're not saying it out loud. They're like, we want to let people in from like these crappy places, right? And that's literally what they're saying. That's that's what they mean. Wh why else would you? Why else would you be like, yeah, let's let everybody in because you know we feel bad for them. Like, why else would you say that? That's what they're. That's what they're trying to say. Okay. The reason I think this is so bad is because this is a disservice to people that are actually hardworking. They're people that want to assimilate into the culture. They're like, I love. I'll just use America for an example because I'm from America. But like, oh, I'm from I don't know wherever the moon. I'm from the moon. But like, I really like American culture. I like the ideas that. Are are proposed by America's the, uh, the idea of opportunity and idea that like you know I can become a self-made person I really like these things and I want to become American I want to be a part of like the American experiment or whatever right so then they come over and they're like yeah that's that's who I am now I'm American right whatever whatever stuff like I left from I'm leaving that behind because that's the that's the stuff that made where I came from so bad so you have those people who are being put in the same box as people that don't give a fuck. Do you see what I, do, you, do you see what I mean about how this is a huge disservice to people, the actual people that you want to immigrate? And you're you're letting everyone skip the line over people who are willing to follow the law. You're like, oh, well, you know, we feel bad for them from where they're from. So we're going to take in a bunch of immigrants that have nothing to do with our country. And, and that's the problem is, is now what you're going to have is you're going to have the guy who did everything legally, the guy who wants to assimilate into the culture. You're going to have him in the same group as all of these other people. And then all of those other people are going to make people racist towards them because they're literally doing the stuff that people are, are being prejudiced against them. Because if you have a group of people, right, and then they commit you know, disproportionate amount of the crimes, of course, people are going like, to look at them and be like, what the fuck? You know what I mean? And again, you have the guy who's not doing anything. The guy who actually wants to assimilate and, and, and become a part of the country that he's moving to. You have him, be, him or her or whatever, being lumped in with the people who don't care. And that's the problem with this kind of like this super, we're super nice. And, you know, we're, we're so we're such nice people, guys. Like, you're so nice. We're going to let in 100,000 immigrants. Right. And it's like, dude, that, that that's not what matters. What matters is you got to take in the people who like are actually going to be a part of your society. And that's the problem. And like, I feel I feel fucking terrible for all of the people that are like they're, they're just hardworking individuals that like actually want to be a part of the countries that they're moving to. 
I feel terrible for them. They, they have to put up with being lumped in with everybody else. ...from their war-torn country. But does multiculturalism work? Does Sweden want more migrants? Are these migrants trying to assimilate into Swedish society? And what does it mean to be a Swede in 2024? What are your thoughts on uh, migration? I think it's a good thing, you know, because uh, some people like... <laughs> oh my gosh, she's looking around, she's like, I think uh, it's a good thing. Fucking looking for the, the, the this goddamn fucking cops, dude. I know, dude. <laughs> people from places like... Holy example, shit. Ukraine or Palestine, like, Holy they shit, somewhere to go. We have, the like, cameras? unfortunately, the, like, the not even, she's she's not even looking. a little bit, like... She's not even looking uh, at them. I think okay. so. Well, are there any negatives you've observed or heard of? Yeah, of course you see all these uh, shootings and stuff like that, but it's what it is. He can't, <laughs> he can't even say it. He just, he just, it is what it is. It is a Dude, very interesting bro. place for multiculturalism. Holy fuck. In 2012, and it was very Holy fuck. at that time. I noticed, this is my first time back in 12 years, yeah. and I noticed that. Did you, did you, you guys want to hear my immigration policy? It's, it's so, it's so good. I have, I have the best, I, dude, my immigration policy it would be amazing. Vote for leaflet for president, and this is this is immigration policy. I will one to one trade the people that hate America, and they're like they're like fuck America. I hate everything about th this country. It's the worst. Burn it to the ground. I will trade those people one for one for uh for Hong Kong people that want to immigrate to America. One for one trade. I will I will send the people that want to burn down America and and stomp an American flag. I will send those people to Hong Kong one for one and trade for their people. Um, it's become a little bit more diverse. Mm. I'm not sure necessarily how Swedes feel about uh, Also diversity. Cuba. I do, I do Cuba. I, you know, I, I, any country. Any country that like, there's a person that like, I really love America and I, like, I want to move there and like, I want to be a part of like th that. I will trade, I will trade the Americans one for one that hate America and want to move out of here. All the people are like, oh, I can't wait to move to Canada. Yeah, I'll, I'll trade those guys. What specifically- It's an exchange program. From the importation of third world- and, and, and the thing is, is like nobody can bitch about it because it's like a net zero to the problems. So like people people wouldn't really get mad about it, about like more, more. There, there's no argument that you could make against that being a bad trade. I mean, I work in the healthcare system and mm -hmm. I have colleagues coming from all over the world. The problem is if Hong Kong will accept that, not my problem. And we, we need those people. So the, for the moment, birth rates are going down and we okay. really need to even out the yeah, population yeah. pyramid. Mm -hmm. I think Sweden has an obligation to let people from other places in. Uh, like, let's yeah. say a refugee. Yes. Yeah? Yeah. Why? Uh, we at least did have the finances. I think that um, we should be a helpful country. Why is it always women? I think okay. it's important to be open, but I also think that we need to take to be responsible to the people that- I, I apologize to everybody on behalf of my people. We are welcoming to this country to make them integrate as good as possibly can be done. Mrs. Maternal Instincts, that might be what it is, yeah. In this country is that- uh, That might, that might be, tr that's true. That is true, actually. It, it might be that. We want to be more <coughs> reluctant in letting in too much because we've seen how things can escalate. The remigration concept, I'm sure you've heard of it. Um, I don't think that's going to work. Okay. To be honest. If, Do you think it'll be effective? Will people go home if offered the sufficient amount? I don't think so. It's okay. fucking wild. So. Did you know, honestly, it might be worth it. I don't know. Like, I don't know what the numbers are for, like, how much... And I know this sounds terrible in terms of like, like, you know, the, the average citizen is probably like, man, I don't want to pay money like that. Like my tax dollars going to that. It might almost be worth it. Like in terms of like how much money is spent. I don't know what the numbers look like, but I, I think there are numbers in which that could actually be worth it. Yeah. Dep depends on what country and, and I mean it's uh, always uh, okay, different. So women are more compassionate by design yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. I've heard that they are enacting some new things they're trying to with like paying some people to leave um, I think they have dude, dude I mean the thing is uh, the truth is I used to be like a lot more I, I guess quote unquote compassionate in terms of like really just being like everybody's good and all that right and then dude I, and then I played fucking I played fucking League of Legends and I had that guy on my team every other game. And I was like, you know what, maybe, maybe, maybe some people just suck. Lots of room and lots of opportunity to spend their money in better ways. Um, and I think it's already hard with getting like a personal number and things here. So I think there's a lot more that can be done for um, immigrants coming to Sweden. Why is diversity good in your opinion? I think we need skills and confidence from other countries. I also think that we need, we do get a lot of benefits from other cultural aspects. Food. What are your thoughts on multi- She just wants the fucking kebabs, dude. Holy fuck. She's like, 
Yeah, man. Where am I going to get my kebabs from? Where am I going to get doner from? What the fuck? Holy shit. Culturalism here in Sweden. Yeah, it's like a big melting pot. Does it work well? Yeah, it works well. Yes. You consider yourself a Swede? No. no. No? Why not? Different culture. I have different culture. What does it mean to be Swedish? Um, in my opinion, Swedish means to to be open. Yo! In my opinion, is that my, is that my favorite what person? That's, is that my favorite person? You take my lives? Our future? How dare you? Means to to be open, to be <laughs> interested in internationalism. I think that we should be more welcoming and like trying to get them into this society because now it's more like they get casted out into these like cities outside the city all right. and they get all like bundled up there. The government are like, oh my god, there's criminality going on. Is there criminality or is that is that myth? It's a big problem. Okay. Yeah, but I think it's because these people don't get like integrated yeah. into society. Whoa, whoa, these people, huh? These people? <laughs> they have to do certain things to like survive and get money because the government doesn't help them, I think. Can we stop infantilizing people, okay? It's not the government's responsibility to make sure you assimilate into the culture. It is your responsibility as a person moving to another country, especially as a refugee, when the, the country is being so nice as to even fucking let you in. You should, it's your responsibility. Stop fucking acting like this is like, oh, like it's not their fault. They don't know what they're doing. What the fuck? That's, that's actually kind of racist. The reunited with thousands of them coming, well, sure. five, six, seven, eight years ago. Yeah. That Too much? Not, yes, of course. Okay. We couldn't take it. Well, it's, uh, Julio says it's partially the government's responsibility. Well, yeah, it was a res the government's responsibility to um, to screen them in the first place, of course. But like people, you know, people, it's not it's not a, it's not an idea of like, oh, well, they're here. And like it's the people's responsibility to like move there to actually like make a life for themselves, I think. If you commit crime and I don't punish you. Oh, true. Oh, yeah, 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 of course. I see what you mean, Julio. If you commit a crime and I don't punish you, then the law doesn't exist. Yes, true. That is true. Yeah. Do you think um, hundred percent are I coming agree. to Sweden are trying to integrate? I see or what you're trying, trying to say. To yes. Oh, that depends you're right. On it is partially the government's responsibility uh, on know, that in end. The, in the eighties or seventies, there comes a lot of uh, Indians from Africa. Right. They have integrated very well. Very well. Uh, <laughs> first of all, where are you from? I'm from Nigeria. I came to study for a PhD, Department of Economic History and International Relations. So you've been here for seven years now. About seven years. You feel Swedish? Uh, <laughs> not fully yet. I don't speak good Swedish yet. Okay. But the other thing also is that you know the Swedish community is not as open as many other communities. It's not as what? The other thing also is that, you know, the Swedish community is not as open as many other communities. Mm -hmm. The okay. access sometimes is not there. You have friends that you come to maybe meet at workplace or in school and things like that. But I don't think it goes beyond that in most cases. The bond is not usually there like that. You think as an outsider, it's tougher to uh, integrate here? I think so. What are your thoughts on uh, immigrants coming to Sweden? Good I, or bad thing? I really like it. Okay. My wife is from Colombia. Okay. Yeah. Uh, multiculturalism has made Sweden a better place compared to what it was like when I was growing up. So okay. I'm all in favor. Do you think multiculturalism mm -hmm. here in Sweden works? This is a very tough question because... I wonder how many people, when they think of multiculturalism, they're like, yeah, there's like a lot of good food now. Because that would be like fucking hilarious. If that's like actually what they... <laughs> That's actually like the idea of it. Yeah, they have lots of good food now. Great. I love all the immigrant restaurants, <laughs> bro. It has pros and cons. <laughs> I have seen so many people that think that multiculturalism is diluting, you know, the Swedish culture. However, what I know as somebody- You know, yeah, to be fair, to be fair, I did get, I did get like the worst food poisoning of my life from an Ikea. So you know what? Fair enough. Fair enough. The researcher is that culture is not static. Culture is dynamic. There are some things that even in Sweden, that Swedish people used to do 50 years ago, that when people do now, they will consider to be appalling. Mm. Sure, sure. And this is what it is. Things are always changing. Multiculturalism mm. has some advantages in that. For example, someone like me that is that came for a PhD, yeah. I will consider myself to be an expert, mm -hmm. at least in my field. Yeah. And that is an addition to 
Sweden. And there are so many that will bring their experiences. Very smart people mm -hmm. that can contribute to the system. At See, the but that's not time, everybody. Oh, you have okay. people okay. that constitute nuisance within the system. These sort of people are not limited to the migrant community because you find very uh, people with misdemeanor, so to speak. We, our lives are so integrated with other countries. So I think small right. countries, uh, especially, are really depending on migration. So I think is it currently working? Not as good as I think it can. It can do. Okay. It's developed the society, I think, to learn from different cultures. I think we have a lot to thank multicultural for. Actually, like the food cultural. The food's good. If the job opportunity. Right. Yeah, I'm the food is good, and there's jobs in those restaurants. <laughs> I love multi multicultural. Right. Uh, yeah, I think it works. Uh, <laughs> I love that. Okay. I mean, I mean, the whole Swedish culture is based on immigration, and I love kebabs and working at the kebab restaurant. Immigration from other countries and so forth, yeah. multiculturalism. Right. That's what I mean. <laughs> Could I become Swedish? Holy shit! Yeah, I'd say so. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, all right. But the thing is, is that's just because you're American. If you were from another country or you mm -hmm. wouldn't be welcome but since you're American or highly educated what are you talking no no about? that's what the, no that's so that's... if I came from Somalia would I be welcomed <laughs> <laughs> if you were to be Somali All right. uh, they would put you in like uh, the, the ghetto uh, and, and again, they would put me there or I would move yeah, there you, because you would move there okay. and and since the financial issue in Sweden uh, like it's not very good right now uh, you would have to learn Swedish and then the society would look down upon you or look you down oh no oh no if you move to a country, you have to learn the language. Oh no, that's so mean. I see. You, and you have uh, the marginalization. Yes, and then. Um, and you think it's something? No, I agree. Uh, I understand okay. where he's coming from, uh, and definitely there is an issue right. in, in in Sweden that we have to work on. The gun violence. I'm happy you're talking yeah. about this because. It's something to, that needs to be said. Okay. It's important uh, to, it's to get light on, yeah. But it's easy to look at Sweden. Oh, such a beautiful country. It's very pretty. Uh, it is. Um, I love Sweden. Uh, but, but I mean, you can tell I'm not typical Swedish, uh, but I feel I fit in. Okay. It's it's about how you how you grow up. Can we get a dance before we leave? Can, you, can we see you guys? There we go. There we go. The wonders of multiculturalism. So I headed. What a, what a transition, dude. Holy fuck. To Rinkaby, the mm. infamous no-go zone, where the 60 Minutes camera crew got attacked and this guy fought back in his wheelchair. With 91% of Rinkaby's population immigrants as of 2018, it's a symbol of the parallel societies in Sweden, where migrants seem to live in an entirely different world mm. than the rest of their Swedish neighbors, and some say it represents the problems that arise when migrants do not properly integrate into Swedish society. But real quick, did you know 2.9 billion records were stolen from national public data a few months ago billion with a b we're talking billions birthdays phone numbers addresses and most alarmingly social security numbers oh no imagine this. someone gets a hold of your loved one's social security number they open credit cards drain your bank account imagine this someone gets a hold of you oh my god dude internet dude Liberal hive mind is hacking us all. Go on social security number. They open Holy credit shit. cards, drain your bank account, and they can take out loans all while destroying you or your loved one's credit score while stealing their identity. And here's the kicker. <laughs> These hackers didn't just sell the info. They threw it on the floor while stealing their identity. What? And here's the kicker. <laughs> These <laughs> all while destroying you or your loved one's credit score while stealing their identity. And here's the kicker. <laughs> These hackers didn't just sell the info. Dang. They threw it for anyone to use for free. They hate you. But don't freak out. Today, they hate me. Sponsor Aura is here to help. Aura Oh, God bless. Account, credit card, even your 401k. Plus, Aura's built-in VPN encrypts your online activity so these hackers can't snoop on you online. Holy and shit. The password manager keeps the, the, your password safe and the, the hacker you known as anonymous. Passwords across multiple sites. And in the event that something does go wrong, Aura has your back with up to $5 million in identity theft insurance. Uh -huh. Their US-based 24 7 fraud resolution team is ready to jump in and help you clean up the mess. Go to Aura.com slash Tyler Oliveira to try it 14 days free. Now, Let's go to Rinkaby. Is it actually dangerous? Uh, it is, yes. Mm. Okay. Uh, what's going on there? Uh, you have... Uh, uh oh guys, drug. this guy is a conservative. Watch out, he's a conservative. Selling on okay. the streets. You have uh, multiple gangs in Rinkaby. This is where the uh, Swedish gangs are? To some extent, okay. yeah. Can we talk to some people out here? Excuse me, question for you. Where are you from? Where are you from? Where are you from? Oh, you are in the year uh, You from Sweden? No. Uh, where are you from? Wait, you can't just... Uh, country? 
You can't eat this when it's cup uh, Okay. Oh. Okay. We got a shop right here. We're basically in a um, little Middle Eastern community, it seems like. All right, so rumor has it we're in a no-go I think no it's, you zone. know, I, I think it is kind of, uh, it, it, it is a little hard to, like, gauge because I think it's fine if people don't know the country, like, well, I mean, don't know the language, like, when they first get there, because, like, obviously they don't. Obviously, we've gone. The question is, will we go back home in one piece? Where are they from? Why did they come here? How is life? Let's go find out. Uh, how long have you lived in Rinkaby? For about a year. Okay. Where are you from originally? I'm from sure. Syria. Okay. But I, I have lived in Risne, which is very close to here. So, yeah. Okay, so you are born and raised here in Sweden? No. I I came here in 2015, so... From Syria? Yeah. So, how has your experience been in Sweden um, as a Syrian? Well, it was fine. Uh, I grew up here, so it feels like natural, natural being sweet from Sweden. So you said I learned more Japanese, yeah. probably living there naturally, young, yeah. So mm -hmm. okay. I don't really know that. I didn't have that like mm. tough experience or so. But yeah, it's a nice place actually. Before I moved here, I heard that it was like, like the hood, right? Yeah, exa yeah, yeah, exactly. But no, I wouldn't say that. Okay. I, I like Rinkeby actually. Because they call it a no-go zone. Is that accurate? I mean, we're no, here, no, right? Absolutely not. No. I, I go to the gym like at 10 o'clock at night. Okay. It's fine. As long as you're not involved in the gangs and so on, you're fine, I okay. would say. Is this a sort of parallel society, as they call it? Different world within a world sort of thing? They want it to be like that, actually. The Swedes? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I would say they act like, the no, no, we want you to be involved okay. and be a part of the society. But why would you even place people to live here? You placed us in one, like, area, and then they just put all that... Well, hold on. Well, well hold on. Can't they just leave? I mean, I know there's an issue of money, but I mean, they gotta like build the like if they're gonna if they're gonna house a bus. Say so. Okay, let me back up. If you're gonna have like a bunch of new people, like an influx of new people, like into a place, you have to like have a place to actually house those people. Especially if it's gonna be like government, uh, government houses, right? Obviously, and you have to find like a ch you know cheap land and a cheap place to develop in order to actually like build up those houses. So like obviously they would be all in one spot because that's that that makes a lot of sense logistically. But are they forced to stay there? Um, bad things on us. We are okay. like the scapegoat. Basically, we sell the drugs, they buy them. Sure. But if they wouldn't buy... <laughs> you can't be fucking serious. <laughs> we sell the drugs, but they buy them. If they didn't buy them, then, I mean, come on. I wouldn't sell. So, so let me ask you this. Do people have economic opportunity what outside the of some criminality, like the drug sell? What the fuck? I mean, I mean, they're buying my drugs. I wouldn't be selling the drugs if they weren't buying my drugs. What, dude? Or are young men kind of just like, okay, I guess I'll go sell drugs? Well, uh, Sweden have a free edu education. You can become a doctor and, not, and you get money from CSN, okay. for example, for studying. I get 4,000 crowns for every going month. to become a doctor? Yeah, okay, every smart. month. So it's like $400. You get money to study. study. Exactly. Why, why are people getting involved in gangs then? Well, I think that they... They have a different background, people from like war. I have a hot take. I have a hot take is you don't need money. You don't need money to study. YouTube.com. Do you have access to the internet? YouTube.com. Just, I don't know, go watch some videos on like how to make a house or something. Some, and things like that. Sure. And many kids grow up here with no passion. Schools doesn't have any type of like good uh, education that discipline kids. Mm. They don't have that. Why? There's plenty of like ways that you can learn how to, you can learn a skill. It doesn't necessarily mean that you have to go to like, you know, a college. I mean, if, unless you want to be like a doctor or something, you don't really, or an engineer. You don't really have to go to college. And even then, you, dude, you got to understand like what resources you have, right? Like we got to be like a little bit realistic, right? We live in the world. And this is like, honestly, the best thing about like the the, in, the internet age. The best thing about it is that you have the, you have access to like so much of human um, knowledge for free. That's the craziest thing. You can go on YouTube and learn nearly anything. Nearly anything you can learn on there. Brought to you by Skillshare. Skillshare.com slash leaflet. No, no, not, not, not really. But, but yeah, like you can learn anything really on, on YouTube from, I don't know, game design, coding, so many things. Um, from, from, I learned how to make knives online. I learned how to do a lot of different cooking techniques online on, on just on YouTube. And, and you know, it's all free. So it's like, you don't need a degree to function in society. 
come to Sweden if um, if the Swedes aren't, uh, let's say, welcoming and... Um, because, well, our countries, yeah. um, people are suffering there. As you see now in Gaza, <laughs> yeah. people are dying, basically. That makes sense. I guess my question is why Sweden specifically and not maybe a neighboring like UAE or well, a Middle Eastern country? That is a problem, though, Ragnar, true. Um, credentialism is, is a problem, yes. But that would be a better way to solve it than just giving everyone flat money for education, I think. I would say because the UAE and so on, they didn't open the doors, <coughs> okay. actually. They are Muslim countries sure. and they are our people somehow, sure. but they didn't open their doors. It was Sweden uh, and Germany. Um, where are you from originally? I am from Palestine. Palestine? Yeah. Okay. Um, how do you like Sweden? Yeah. Good. Are they welcoming to refugees? Uh, yeah. I, I, I drive bus. You drive bus? Yeah. And you've been here for how long? Uh, 20 years. 20 years? Yeah. Dang, you 20 years. staying in Sweden forever? Uh, no, not now. Not this, uh, not because the new politic. This is a... Oh, the new different. politics are bad? This is different. Uh, how so? Uh, bad? Yeah. Uh, in what ways? Everything. How so? Economy. Immigration? Yeah. How they treat you? Not for me. Okay. I have uh, Medbori. I have okay, pass. So you're in. I'm from Sweden, Serbia and Peru. Okay, are you born and raised here in Sweden? Yeah. Um, what are your thoughts on Rinkeby? My thoughts in that sense. I don't know. It's a beautiful place in some senses, but I think every place has they its might, problems. They might, speak, yeah. they might speak Swedish, by the way. The people that are... Uh, I just thought I just thought of that. Uh, uh, they might speak sp Swedish instead of English. That might be why he has to like translate and stuff like that. Because again, they have their own language there. What are some of the good things about this place? What are some of the bad things? Things I would say like it's very common for people to really get to know each other. It's very family. Like we normally accept people from other places. I think many people have bad thoughts about this place. Yes, because it's a place where maybe it's very mixed with the cultures. And I think people normally have the tendency to really uh, give this place a shot, like a really good chance. And I think pe if people would do that, it would get along with people living here. I think people already have racist thoughts about this place. I I think that we are involved in the society. Many Syrians educate and go to universities and so on. So I'm not saying that the immigrants is very like not doing bad things. Sure. They are and they maybe they aren't like, okay. following the rules and so on. But the government could do better. What, what's one change you'd like to see in the government? Don't spread propaganda on social media okay. about us immigrants being the like uh, the people who kill and so on. Because when it's a, a Okay. about us immigrants being the like uh, the people who kill and so on because when it's a, a Swedish a Swedish man who who like commits a rape I don't know if this is this might be partisan this seems a little partisan so I actually don't know if this is true so if 80% of people are Swedish yeah, I'd have to do like kind of deep research on that. It, that. That's the thing that's hard is like a lot of the times, like dude, a lot of the times these places, I don't know if this place is, this, this might be legit. I don't know. But a lot of the, the time, these places, they fudge the numbers just, just like for their own, uh, their own personal uh, thing. And I'm very aware of that. Like, like when I look at something, it's like, I don't know if like, is this site like actually trying to push an agenda? So then they, they, they make the numbers like look even worse, right? Same thing with this number that Tyler posted. I don't know where he got it from. They said a man. <laughs> when it's a black man, they would uh, put his name mm. or something that shows you that he is not sweet uh, from Sweden. So, yeah. But I don't think that we are committing more crimes than Swedes because they do commit crimes, but they did he dude did he just did did he just fucking do the gym thing from the office? So, yeah. But I don't think that we are committing more crimes than Swedes because they he just he just did it. The <laughs> He did the, the fucking thing from the office. They do commit crimes, but they, they, the media doesn't show. Why are there so many shootings here? Gang crimes. Yeah. Why do people, <laughs> from, from your understanding or speculation, get involved in gangs out here? I would say the main reason, maybe, you cannot pay your bills. <laughs> I don't think <laughs> everyone zoom. chooses to do this thing. Do because they, did it, they, did, they probably didn't want it to look like that. Also, I'd be like, go on down the road, you fuck. Whoa! If you want to support our boots on the ground, independent journalism that is not bought and paid for. This guy's doing like the real shit, like the real, I, I like this guy's stuff. Interests, along with exclusive DLC content that YouTube won't let me upload. If you guys and like, if you guys like, if you guys like this kind of like media, you gotta support, you gotta support the, the media that you actually care about. 
because it's the only way to make more of it. Access to all my videos before they go up on YouTube. Go subscribe at patreon.com slash Tyler Oliveira for less than five bucks a month. A lot of heterogeneous cultures here. We got kokab, East African products, mm. uh, Thai, sushi. So we're in Rinkaby, and here we are. This is what the famous spot where the wheelchair guy drove into the dude attacking the boom mic operator. So we're noticing, just do a pan here, every walk of life we're seeing. So we got a cool ethnic market here. We got Palestine Cola. This is a truly a melting pot we're witnessing. This reminds me of New York in a lot of ways. And last but not least, the Islamic Cultural Center. Yeah. We're in front of the police station in Rinkaby. Can you tell me some of the problems and difficulties they face building? Building this place? Yeah, so when they started building this place a couple of years ago, uh, the construction workers got attacked and they had a, like, a really hard time also getting the stuff here because of like roadblocks and stuff. So uh, who were they getting attacked by? Like local gangs okay. and gang members. That didn't want a police station right in the heart of Rinkaby? Yeah. You know, you want to know what's crazy though? Uh, kind of expanding on the point that, that, um, that Julio made, made a point that, you know, it is kind of the government's uh, responsibility. A lot of this sort of a lot of this stuff can be avoided if they just enforce the laws like even harder because then people will be really afraid to like actually break the law and then you would have less you know since there would since there would be like less crime because of that there would be less immigrants committing committing crimes and therefore um you know that it, it would contribute to less of a negative view towards them these reasons yeah <laughs> for obvious reasons you know at some point you perhaps also could understand that from a criminal point maybe of view, that's you know, the key a, a maybe that's the like key to immigration is to increase policing that, of course like on proportionate building, to the amount of like immigrants you let in walls from the outside as yeah. well to not like be able to throw molotov cocktails and such fireproof bulletproof fucking molotov drive proof <laughs> they throw fucking Why? molotov because cocktails you know, in Rinkibi, yeah. i mean i mean they are very good at counter-strike and in, in uh, in uh, Sweden, to be fair. So, you know, Molotov's bomb has been planted. It makes sense. This is a fortress we're looking at right here. Uh, yeah. So what they also do is... Terrorists win. They escort police from here and yeah. to work. So, for example, if you're a local policeman here and you arrest someone... This, this, the the Swedes are very, they're very good at Counter-Strike. I know. I have Swedish friends. They're all really good at it. Uh, the center. Oh, then, then you go, go back here, change uniform and, you know, walk to the subway station. With police guards. Yeah, Not CS? Exactly. No, they're good at CS, dude. Dude, I've had a... One of my longtime friends is Swedish and his brother. And they're so good at Counter-Strike, actually. Crazy good. And it's like every time I play with people from Sweden... They're always like mega good at Counter Strike. After they do their job and arrest people mm. here, yeah, Later, that's why they got escorted from here. But I wanted to hear from an immigrant who moved to Sweden when she was 20 and became the first black police officer in Sweden. Is integration possible? And why are so many migrant youth turning to a life of crime? And we're in a big police compound. This place mm -hmm. is fortified. Why is that? I mean, it starts with like for maybe 10 years ago, we, we, we have a community policing and we have small stations. And then uh, one day someone threw a hand grenade. Uh, did they, they, they literally use the fucking video game clip for that? The building, Bro. The, 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 the politician decided that we should be a can't. huge police station that will be in Rinkeby. I, if I, I became police officer 2006, right? So between 2006 to 2015, no, or 40, everything was you know cool here. Sure. You have a bit more or less small crimes like uh, I don't know, uh, burglary and uh, theft. You know those small things. After 2015, then we start the gang violence in Sweden, and then I'm curious, when did when did Sweden? In, uh, ah, man, I want I really I wish I had time to look into it. I wonder when Sweden Sweden uh, if they implemented between 2015 and now if they implemented like a major change to the uh, immigration policy to allow a lot more people in because it's possible because the thing is is like you have to let like when you're letting in immigrants there has to be like a percentage um it has to be a certain percent depending on like your population because if you flood it too much then it shifts the, it shifts the culture too fast uh, it doesn't give time for like a uh, proper like cultural assimilation i wonder if that's related we have certain group who start to uh, build kind of gang, uh, what they call themselves. Sure. We are having shooting before in Södertälje, where we have immigrants from Middle East, but Christian immigrants from Middle East, okay. who also build them their own, you know, uh, a shooting, a throwing stone on the police officers. But now, from 2021 up to now, everything's quiet here because we were not like sitting down and watching them. We. You know, you know what I mean? Okay. Start from 2015. Okay. Yeah. During the refugee crisis? Yeah, that's most of the people say that it's because of refugees, but I can say because most of the people who are... Yeah. 
in the gang violence. Most of them born here in Sweden. Okay. And they became they came to Sweden for many years. So these are second gen uh, children of immigrants. Of course, okay. of course, of course. Yeah. Those youth, they have to feel that they are part of this society. They are Swedish too. You you cannot give a, a person identity at the same time making the person feeling that you're not a part of this society because you look different. In living in an area when most of them are immigrants, how can you be a part of the society if you don't know the rules, you don't know the culture, you're not learning anything. If I were a kid and if I were to throw a grenade into this room, for instance, what could you do as a police officer and then how would the court system take me in as, let's say, a 13-year-old? I'm a 13-year-old, I mean, <laughs> nothing gonna happen. Nothing would happen? No. You would take me into custody and I... Yeah, we don't gonna take you into custody. Will take what soil? <laughs> yeah, the, I mean, the, the social will take over the the whole investigation. A young man in a kind of uh, how do you call it? Who behaves? Or is is a kind of? Um, it's not really a jail, but it's more like a place where they get educated. Or if, even if I were to throw a grenade yeah, at a police yeah, officer, that's the, that's the, just, that's the system saying. in Sweden. I say that they should throw them to jail, and they have to learn. If you throw a hand grenade, you can get ten years old. Or if you caught you with the arm again 10 years old if you sit down there you're gonna start to think at the same time the government have to prepare that what's happening in Sweden is like they throw you in, in the prison and then after when you get out you don't have anything to go where do you go you go back to your friends sure and then you throw another hand grenade exactly. or shoot someone else oh because your parents are from another country you have to learn Swedish too why do they not teach people uh, skills in jail do they not have like you can like learn like educational opportunities like learn like I don't know maybe like approved approved like YouTube videos or something like that for learning? They don't. Uh, I mean that seems like a problem. I don't know. Maybe maybe that is something to like look into because again like YouTube is pretty free, right? I'm not saying give them like unrestricted access to YouTube, but maybe like if a person if a person was like I want to learn about carpentry or something, you could have like some pre-approved playlist of YouTube videos for them to watch. You know, and then they're kind of entertained at the same time. So it's like a little bit, you know, a little bit good for the mental, you know, for people. Maybe that's something to look into. I don't feel like all the, I don't feel like this like free Internet stuff is being utilized enough. Swedish too. <clears throat> why don't why don't I study Swedish as my 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 Swedish? Yeah, you can do that too. Teaching them basic skills like carpentry, painting, brick building. Uh, I know they do that with like cooking. Uh, like in prisons, they like have like programs where like they teach you how to cook and stuff like that. But um, I, I I think I think they should have things like that. And uh, and um, that being said, I am aware that um, prison's not supposed to be fun. So. The U.S. I think prison a little bit about is I about think, incarceration, not is, reformation. Well, th this might be a hot take, but I actually think that it's both. I think the prison system should be about incarceration and not fun. And, um, you know, you're just kind of in a shit situation. I think that's part of it because part of the prison system is about justice. But the problem is if it's only about justice, then when you re-release the people, then again, like she said, they have nowhere to go. And then they end up like, what do you, what do you do? You get out of the prison and then all of the, all of the, um, you know, nobody will hire you because you have a record. So it's kind of, yeah, it's kind of a problem. But I also believe that people who hire should have that knowledge of if, of if a person was in jail or something like that i don't know how you solve that that's like kind of a very complex problem but i, I do think it's a little bit of both uh, the, the purpose of prison is both it is justice it, justice first actually and then and then um you know rehabilitation second i know it's like a hot take i think i think most people are like prison should only be about rehabilitation i actually think it's i think the primary purpose is justice Okay. Swedish is taking these young children who are born here yeah. to, to learn. It's more, it's more, uh, sorry, and I'm pausing again. It, the primary purpose is justice, but again, we have to be like pragmatic about it. Uh, if you, if you just throw them back into the streets without any sort of rehabilitation, then of course they'll reoffend. So the, it, it's, it's, it's utilitarian to like have that kind of a, a, a system in place. Swedish has a second <clears throat> language. Exactly. And they're born in Sweden. Yes. But they're never going to truly feel Swedish. Exactly. They tried to okay. do that with me. My, my father came to the school and said, hey, what? Can, let's say an immigrant is coming here to Sweden right now. Can they become Swedish? Can they integrate into of society? Course. They can if you make it easy for them. Give them the tools. Make it easy for them. Let the parents to be parents. They have to also to tell us immigrants coming here. Okay, if you come to my country, this is the law. 
The one is telling you. Everyone is going to the suburb. How do we know about what, what we have to do? Sure. You have to tell me. This is the law. We want you to follow it. Now they are saying that. As even they're still saying that, but they are not telling what to do either. They have to be proud themselves about their own culture before they can introduce that culture to me. If they don't know about the, the culture themselves, how can they introduce the culture to me as a foreigner? How, they have to know who they are first before they tell us who we are. Or who they want. I'm not going to lie. That's kind of an argument for no immigration, isn't it? Fix your own shit before you try to take care of other people. Am I wrong? She's making an argument that's like, maybe you shouldn't have immigration until you like fix your own shit and you understand your culture. You understand who you are. Then you can take immigrants in. It's kind of kind of weird, you know? <clears throat> to be. Who they want us to be? Surprising, What's actually. What's the Sulish culture? They will say, yeah, stand, openness. Openness, stand in a queue. You go to, <laughs> that's not a culture. You, you, they can't define their own culture. The segregation in this country is That seems like, see. <laughs> that's like a perfect argument to not have immigration, actually. That's crazy. In many different places like this. Uh, we were just visiting like uh, central Stockholm the other day and there you saw a whole other picture. Totally different, totally different. This is entirely Middle Eastern and African people yeah. in Sweden. Yeah. Because you guys let them in and you guys welcome them. Yeah, we had the prime ministers talking on national television to open our hearts and to be like accepting. Yeah, for almost uh, 40 years, perhaps. And now you're paying. I fucking hate these politician dickheads that they, they do this shit because they want to look like they're so good. Like they're such nice people, but they don't, dude, their responsibility is to take care of their own people first before they take care of other people. And it's freaking so annoying to me when they, when they do this whole like, oh, we care so much. Like, you know, we're such nice people. Look at this guy. Look at our country. We're so nice, dude. I fucking hate it. I hate it so much. Because it fucks everything up. You know what I mean? Like, obviously, I want to be in a position where we can take care of other people, obviously. It's, 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 that's a good thing. It's a general good thing. But if you do that and you ignore your own people, the whole thing collapses from underneath. You have to have a strong foundation before you can begin to think about that. It's kind of like, for me, th it kind of reminds me of people that... Mm, trying to talk about like grand issues of like oh i gotta like you know i gotta fight for the cause and shit like that but then you know they don't even have their whole they, they don't even have their own life and family together and they're like oh like i gotta go fight for the causes and shit like that it's, it's so annoying paying some of these people thirty four thousand usd to go back is that the idea uh yeah the current government uh has imposed like a an amount of money to return back or well, we got quite big in sweden uh, with multiple headlines of uh, a full plane going back to iraq after hearing from risa i met up with marcus the chairman of the conservative student union at university of stockholm mm -hmm. bilan osman a muslim activist journalist and second gen somalian immigrants and rv a spokesman from a conservative think tank oikos mm -hmm. to see if they too thought it was the government's fault that migrant youth are struggling to integrate. Sweden has always had minorities. Sweden okay. portray itself as a, uh, how do you say it, like homogeneous uh, okay. country where uh, everyone is like white and blonde and so on. But there has been minorities in Sweden for uh, like centuries. So Sweden has never been like this. Uh. This seems kind of bullshit. I, I wonder what the actual immigrant percentage is. Because I don't think it was that high before. I'd have to look into it, but I'm kind of I'm kind of preemptively calling bullshit on this. Blue, white, blonde country, but in like the 1930s, we had a lot of migration mainly because of war. The last decades, uh, because of the of the wars. But in the beginning of the 90s, Sweden became a kind of racist country. We funded. Oh boy. The Race Biology Institute, uh, where you measured people's heads and uh, even sterilized minorities. Oh, they did that everywhere. Well, are the people themselves trying to integrate themselves into society? Where's the disconnect? Yeah, well, of, of I thought she said the 1990s. I was like, what? Of course, a lot of, a lot <laughs> of them actually are integrating society. Real? That's 1990s? Like, I, I guess you meant ni but, ni um, 1900s. The government is trying, but they have for a long time tried to just throw money at, money at these places. But for some reason, they, they are not being able to integrate anyways. Um, Why so, is that? Yeah, I don't think they want to integrate. I think that's the answer. They came to Sweden for the economical incentives. They not, didn't came, come here to become Swedes. So I think a lot of people... <laughs> 
their mm. own background is uh, qu quite solid. They want to keep that as well. For example, something obvious these days that we cannot take in infinite of number of p new people from a different culture, right? Mm -hmm. You have to have this integration, <coughs> assimilation process. That was highly controversial in Sweden for like 15 years ago. So we're having this uh, political thinking uh, which is not controversial at all, really, uh, in the parliament already through the Swedish Democrats and stuff, uh, far right, alt right people at yeah. all. Everyone is concerned about the criminality that's coming up through mm -hmm. the second and first generation migrants. Um, so, dang, it, dude, that guy, dude, that guy had a buy round. I thought, dude, I don't know what the gun laws are in Sweden, but that's crazy. That guy had a full buy. Everyone is very concerned and... Well, in a way, we're trying to rede rediscover what, what Swedish conservatism is. One can say, at least, that uh, what has really rejuvenated Swedish conservatism, the mm -hmm. impulse which has made it relevant again, is an opposition to uncontrolled immigration, which has been the, the dominant political issue in Sweden for now at least 15 years. There are many different kinds of negative effects of uncontrolled third-world mass immigration. One obvious is crime. Today we have a gangsterism in Sweden like interwar Chicago, we have as many bombings per capita as in Mexico. So, the, and, and Sweden used to be a very, very safe country. There's a bunch of studies about this. If you, uh, if you're named Fat Mohammed, let's say, yeah, Fatima or Mohammed, uh, then you have the lesser chance to get a job or okay. uh, get a buy a house. Right? That doesn't mean that because your name is Fatima and Mohammed, your life will suck. But uh, there's been a lot of studies when it comes to the way this is culture in, in Sweden. We have a tendency to not acknowledge that racism exists in Sweden because of you said that Sweden has always been welcoming towards refugees and sure. that's kind of true in, in some sense. I think that that has also <laughs> kind of true in some sense. So being like an excuse <laughs> to not acknowledge not open borders. the racist society that we live in. The Swedish media was that if you opposed immigration on any ground, could be better, could be Open Even borders. if you said that there might be some potential downside, you're a racist. Swedish public debate is like a school of fish, right? Okay. So everyone changes position at the same time. So so n now everyone is kind of opposed to this. But up until 2015, this was, and that's why the Sweden Democrats grew so much. They had a monopoly on saying that immigration could possibly be a bad thing. Now you have like five parties to say that bad or you know not too good. So there's far more competition in that way. Uh, I saw some some data from the Economist today. This was not from Sweden, but from Denmark, but should be pretty much the same. Where they had looked at the fiscal effects of immigration from different parts of the world. But the average effect on, on an from an immigrant from the Middle East and North Africa was that they were a fiscal burden throughout their life. Even, and this is important, even in their prime working <coughs> age. Do you think migrants from Muslim countries are integrating well into Sweden? And is Sweden helping them integrate into Sweden? I actually, I'm, I'm kind of allergic to the <coughs> integration. Tell me why. The, the only way to adapt to a society is that you get the chance to have a job, to have a good education. That for me is like integration. But in the Swedish society, we are more talking about assimilation, that people that are coming to Sweden has to change the way they are. And that's Duh. It's problematic. People don't have to have one identity. They can have multiple. Like a couple days ago, we had a, it was a debate in Sweden. I'm sorry, guys, I'm, a, I'm identity and cultural fluid. Between the party leaders and right. the leader for the Christ Democrats said that Islam doesn't always adapt to Swedish values. Uh, what does that mean? Uh, I'm a Swedish Muslim. Uh, in which way is there a conflict between Islam and, and Sweden? Uh, that's a false narrative and that's the problem with like the society. Do you think some of the laws or precepts? Well, it depends because uh, there's a lot of different kinds of uh, Islam, right? There's 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 different uh, degrees of uh, <coughs> degrees of seriousness, is what I'll say. And the Quran and the, the precepts. Of the same thing with Christianity, really, or any other religion. Of Islam conflict with Swedish society and Swedish law. First of all, if you look at the world population, one fourth is is Muslims. The way someone see Islam in Afghanistan or in Somalia or in Iran or in Sweden is obviously different. We have a lots of different interpretations of what Islam is. I don't believe in the concept that Islam is one thing that has a conflict with West. 
than values. So Swedes... Well, again, it depends. It depends what we're talking about. And, and, and this is the problem is it's together when it matters, right? Like when, when it's like, oh, we, you know, we, we have to not care about it because, you know, otherwise that's Islamophobic. It's like, wait, 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 what if I'm only against like that one part of Islam? Oh, you, know, you don't like Islam. That's Islamophobic. Obviously, like we're talking about how there's different types of, is there, there's different, there's different, I guess, I, I don't know what's the, what's the word. It's like denomination and like Christian. I don't know what the, the term exactly is for it with Islam, but there's very obviously like different degrees of like radicalism in Islam, right? So like, it, it always becomes a case of like, if I'm like, well, I don't like that. It's like, oh, you're Islamophobic, you know? It's like, have, I think, a much harder way grappling with and understanding Islam than people would do having in the US or in Poland. I mean, literally, literally, Asmin had this problem when he got, he got fucking destroyed. It's like, the, again, the con the conflation of like, oh, you're talking about, you talk, it, it, it's, it's very obvious, like, you know, you're trying to talk about like a very specific, like, bad part of like Islam or a bad part of like, you know, a culture. And it's like, oh, so you hate all of that culture. And that's, no, no, that's not, that's not what you're saying. It's like, obviously. People actually still believe in God. For, for Swedes, Islam is just some superficial thing. It's like, yeah, you know, don't they don't drink alcohol. But maybe there are Swedes who don't drink alcohol either. The fact that people okay. would, would actually care deeply about religion is uh, an alien idea to many Swedes. People didn't imagine at all that, that we would have a large number of mosques in Sweden, or maybe it would be a temporary thing because Muslims should stop being Muslims because why would they be Muslims? So the expectation was these Muslim migrants would leave their religion behind and become truly Swedish. Yeah, I imagine so. Okay. So for example, we have a big issue in Sweden with rapes, sex, uh, sexual... Uh, the Crusades, like, I don't know like too much about it, so I, I don't want to go too deep into it, but like... They were, they were like killing each other during that era. It wasn't like, it wasn't like the Christians like went like, oh, let's like, let's fuck them up for no reason. It, it was retaliatory, but then the, the, it was retaliatory and then it was retaliatory and then it was retaliatory. It was just basically just war at that point. Wars of retaliation, which, which is really what that whole thing was. Yeah, exactly. Souls, and they are coming from first-generation migrants. But we also have a uh, having a big issue with gang criminals, which is completely. The Crusades were response to seven centuries of uh, invasion and oppression. Oh yeah, I have to, I'd have to look more into it, but like I know that that was that was a big part of it. Yeah unique for Sweden, we haven't had that before. And that, that is a result of the second generation of migrants not integrating in Swedish society. So why do you think- It was not like they woke up one day and they were like, you know what, we feel like we, we feel like going over there and like killing all the Muslims. That's not what happened. Um, second generation. It's like, that's retarded because I, a lot of people think that about the Crusades and it's not really- Non-ethnically Swedish youth are uh, becoming members of gangs and committing crimes disproportionately. There's individual factors uh, when it comes to mental health or that you like, i feel like there's such a double standard when it comes to like western uh western society in in all aspects in all aspects really there's there's this huge double standard for like western society and like you know anything that has to do with like christianity um and european uh european western values like there's there's this huge double standard like how like people would say things like oh you know the 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 what the the europeans came to america and they just fucked up all the natives for like no reason and they were like so peaceful and shit like before that dude that is not what happened the the natives were killing each other before any anyone from europe even got here they were already killing each other for land and taking over each other's land and then all that happened was the europeans came and did that to them like that's just the truth. I'm sorry. Like, this isn't like some fucking, you know, Pocahontas colors of the wind shit. That's not what happened. People are retarded for thinking that, like, everyone was living in, like, harmony. In, like some fucking utopia before anybody got here. Many of them have ADHD or have had trouble in school. That doesn't mean that everyone... Thanks for the follow, uh, like, uh, Kukalan. Like Thank a you. Single household no, obviously, I think all that stuff is bad now. Like, obviously, like, you know, we, we've evolved as a society to say, like, oh, no, maybe we shouldn't do that anymore. Everybody kind of decided, ironically, because of the West. Because the West took over and decided, like, maybe we shouldn't do this anymore. You know? Let's be real. There are still places, there are still places in this world that are our PVP zones. <laughs> because they have nothing to do with... Uh... 
poor sure. environment or have ADHD uh, will go into gang violence. But we have a huge problem. I think it's, so for example, they are growing up in an environment yeah. which is not, there are no incentives to get involved in the majority society and they're living in these clusters with people from their own culture, right? So they feel not feeling that they are belonging. belonging. I actually looked into that recently, Ruined Fantasy. is quite, it's quite interesting, the whole Aztec situation. Um, um, I, I have to do a little bit more research into it because I watched the video. I watched multiple videos from like all different sides. And like, obviously from one side uh, has a little bit, there's a little bit info of like, maybe there was issues of corruption where the Aztecs actually did want to surrender. And then there are, uh, there, 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 there's a lot involved in it. And again, it's kind of hard because we're talking about like really old historical stuff. It's not like we had like, like cell phones where people were actually recording what was happening. This is all like letters. This is all letters and accounts from people that fucking hate each other. You know what I mean? Like even nowadays, I mean, put it this way, even now, nowadays people can take something that's very obviously not true and like tell everyone that it's true and then it becomes the truth historical truth and um we live in even in our society where we do have cameras and evidence uh multiple people reporting on the same thing uh, and you know again the speed of communication is not like a fucking boat where a person gets a letter and then takes it to somebody else and then they read it but there are a lot of accounts of what happened back then watch apocalypto pretty accurate um yeah, I'm, I'm telling to watch it. I heard it was pretty brutal, though. To the Swedish uh, <clears throat> society, therefore, they are uh, gro having a growing uh, re resentment to the Swedish culture. Why is history is often not transparent, and black and white on issues. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's why the question in itself. This is what I like so much about history. It's like so fascinating. Like, there's all these like you know all these like animes and like stories of like all this crazy shit. But history itself is really fucking crazy tell so if we're talking about how can social services be better in having contact with the schools that young children are sure. that's a solution okay. or how can like the law informants uh, how can they have a better communication with social services and schools? Okay. that's a solution uh, we have already hundred years ago agreed as an international community that there are not different races you are not Nani? community that there are hundred years ago agreed as an international community that there are not different races do she's smoking the drugs that they're selling what the fuck she's the one buying them what the fuck what international community that there are not different races you are not born with some kind of quality let's, let's let her finish let her let her cook guys let her cook let her cook is that is in line with your skin color or right, some I'm the back kind of, of okay we're gonna, we're gonna listen to the whole thing different races you are not born with some mm. kind of qualities that is in line with your skin color or your religion and so on mm. Hold on. What did she say? That is in line with you are not born with some born. kind of qualities, kind of qualities. That is in line with your skin color or I get that part or your religion. But religion and so on. Uh, we don't have any most impact when it comes to gang mm. violence. Mm. It's that non-white people in the suburban places where those kind of uh, shootings are sure. going on, uh, they are the biggest victims. So in they're this. killing each other? It's not killing it, each other. It's it's like... Who, who's it's killing them? Criminals that are attacking people in our society. Who uh, are these criminals predominantly? I don't know. I don't have any... <laughs> Who are they killing? The people. Yeah, but who? The people. Well, who's predominantly doing it? Uh, I don't know. Uh, kind of statistics to say that. Gangs. Uh, these are... <laughs> comes out it's gangs it's gangs or i wouldn't say 100 percent straight up the children of immigrants maybe 95 99 98 percent something like that now this doesn't mean that indigenous swedes never commit any crimes at all they sure. certainly Obviously. do many crimes especially violent crime sexual crime there is a, a very strong overrepresentation among uh, certain immigrants uh -huh. i would say that people who commit less crimes are for example uh, vietnamese immigrants southeast asian ones thai certainly japanese yep. uh, chinese while you have very strong strong overrepresentation when we're talking about groups from Middle East, North Africa. But I thought culture doesn't matter. So which is it? Is it skin culture? Is it skin color or is it culture? I want to ask her. I want to ask the other. I want to ask the other woman. Well, what is it? Which one is it then? 25 years. So it's come up. We've had about 2 million immigrants. Because I don't think it has anything to do with skin color. So what is it then? 
come to Sweden. If these had been two million Norwegians, we wouldn't have this discussion. Is it just nothing? You think Sweden has an obligation? Just random? Is just RNG? Just bad RNG, man? Like I don't know, bad RNG. We got all the all the all the people, you know, committing committing crimes. So just you know, it's just it's not just rolled bad, you know to help refugees. Sweden actually has that because after the Second World War, uh, a lot of countries decided to adapt to... Culture matters, race does not 100% agree. The uh, United Nations Declaration on Human Rights. Uh, and one of those human rights is that every person and every human being has a value. And every human being has the right to seek uh, asylum. Refuge. Yeah. And nothing human being on. has that every person declaration on human rights uh, and one of those human rights is that every person and every human being has a value and every okay. human being okay. has the right to seek uh, asylum Refuge. yeah and nothing has changed so, but the only thing that has changed in Europe is that we are heading to more but asylum is when you you go to the neck the nearest country because you are in you're in danger for your life that's why you are moving to a different country that is like immediately next year's because you are escaping that's the asylum how the fuck do you get to sweden <laughs> how do you get to sweden on asylum from syria more fascist and nationalists kind of politics sure. yeah. oh yeah they're fascist that's why uh but the question is why do they go through like 15 countries to come to dude i'm honestly surprised dude you know what the problem you want to know the biggest problem with this whole thing this is the biggest problem and the thing i'm the wor I, this is what i'm the most worried about okay because this is real this could actually happen if it's not already happening the problem is if you keep calling people fascists like this you're like oh you're fucking nazi you're fucking fascist and they're like yo i just i just want to take care you know i just want to take care of my country like, i think our country is important and like i don't think they share our values they don't share our culture if they shared our culture it'd be fine but like they don't you know i'm okay with like immigrants that share our culture or like if you want to claim asylum at like the next available country i'm fine with those things but i'm not fine with like the way it's going and like oh you're a fascist you're a nazi whoa i'm not i'm not a fascist or a nazi like nah you're a fascist or a nazi dude some people are gonna say like you know what maybe i am and then that's that's when it's gonna get fucked because people are gonna be like okay fine you want a race war okay fine all right let's do it that's what's gonna happen if you keep going down this route of calling people like fascists and nazis when they're being perfectly reasonable in their in their um they're being perfectly reasonable in their in their concerns and then you keep pu pushing this whole you're a fascist you're a nazi you're a racist okay fine maybe i am maybe i am racist then punk maybe that's what it is you want to see it fine that's what's gonna happen you're gonna start you're gonna start an actual race war with this if it hasn't already happened if it hasn't already started sweden that's my question yeah, yeah. exactly so is that, or both? Uh, i think there are they there are huge economical incentives to come here to sweden obviously uh, but like, i don't want that to happen this is why like honestly like like i, I don't want to like fear monger or like be super emotional about it but like i'm actually afraid that like this is gonna happen i'm gonna be caught like right in the middle you know what i mean i'll be like right in the middle like oh shit <laughs> like I don't, I don't want that to happen at all and do that through I, the asyl process as well this idea from the 60s right like we should have a lot of foreign aid we should care about the third world but we should care about nicaragua and we should care about uh somalia and we should care you know all these countries far away why well because that was virtuous they, they used to say there it is it was virtuous. It was virtuous to do it. That Sweden is a humanitarian superpower. And, and there was this idea that, you know, Sweden, after World War II, Sweden together with Switzerland and the US, Sweden was the richest country in the world. And Just don't cure b blindness or build people water, water, uh, you know, build people wells. Cause it makes you an evil person. We had this idea, this feeling that we're actually better than other people. We're rich. We're the best. We have the most progressive, most modern society. We're the model for the world. And the fact that we were rich because we had stayed out of World War II uh, and didn't have our industries bombed into dust and could profit from rebuilding all the rest of Europe, you know, people didn't want to think about that part. But this meant that we were the best and most virtuous people in the world. The model for the world, everyone should be like us. We we, we got this idea that... God, this is like that guy that you... eat. This, dude, this is like when you... You play like you play league of legends you you play you play like a, like a moba and you have like that one guy on your team that gets fucking hard carried and he's just like i'm so good and everyone else is just kind of looking and i'm like yeah man i'm so good dude so good easy easy game easy easy game this is the easiest game of my life bitch <laughs>
<laughs> Swedishness is not a particular culture. It's not having a common history, a specific language or anything like that. No, it means being modern. And the Sweden was the most modern country in the world. And if you immigrate to Sweden from another country, as soon as you pass the border, you cross the border, you become Swedish, right? The idea of a national state is old. <laughs> the national state and the idea doesn't work anymore. Uh, of course, Sweden is multi-culture. Sweden go. works. I don't see any bombs. <laughs> no, you're right. Of course. Yep. Multi Holy shit! <laughs> this only goes to 2020! Culture is the only way that the world works. <laughs> People that are... Dude, it's so funny, dude. It, dude, it's so funny. Because, like, uh, I have a lot of friends who are, like, European. And, like, one of my friends is, is Swedish. And they always make fun of him, like, related to bombs. It's always, like, some kind of, like, bomb joke with him. Uh, like, <laughs> they're always, like, making some, yeah, some bomb joke about my Swedish friend because of the amount of, the amount of bombs that, like, the, like, you know, of, of the amount of bombings in Sweden, in Sweden. So, like, would, would they be do would they be making those jokes if there wasn't any basis for it? That are nationalists. I think that they are most, more, like, nostalgic and... Yeah, it's like the London jokes, you know, the London, like, the knife London jokes. It's like that, yeah, I'm exactly. Thinking about the time that doesn't exist and haven't existed. Welcome to time. London! Here, premise people are thinking on that everyone wants to become Swedes, right? And when Swedish people meet other people from different cultures, they realize that they want don't they don't want the influence except for food or whatever. It's a yeah. joke in Sweden. Um, yeah, so Swedish people don't want that at all. And not even the one who actually say uh, believes that they want to either. They are living on Södermalm here south of Stockholm where everyone is Swedes already hanging out with these Swedish people, friends going to Swedish. I'm telling you, if you kept the image Immigration low, and you slowly integrated people in. There would be a lot less racism, I think. I, I think. I think it. I, I think it would be better. I don't have any proof of that. It just feels, but you know. <laughs> I think it makes sense. Are you and seeing like that's my hypothesis. Flight, flight moving out of neighborhoods that are being um, uh, flooded with new yeah. migrants. Is that yeah, what's we, happening? We have Swedish fly, uh, white flight uh, areas in Sweden. Okay. Yeah, definitely. If I moved here, would you consider me no. a Swede after a few years of integration? No, no, uh, you are not a Swede. Okay. Uh, but man, that's also all right. You don't have to be a Swede, right? It's no, it's not mandatory to be a Swede. If you Someone just would get offended by you saying that, is my guess. So, yeah, maybe, but I, I don't care. <laughs> what are your hopes for Sweden in the next 20 years? I want it to be more of the Sweden that I love. Sometimes I miss my own home country. <laughs> uh, that is Sweden? Yeah, okay. like I, I have felt like, especially the last 20 years, I would say, uh, we have had an increase when it comes to hate crimes, uh, when it comes to the impact that the right wing movement has had. I want it to be the democratic country that I know Sweden is, and there's a whole anti-racist movement. I love the fucking, the fucking siren going off in the back. So fun. It's so funny. And here, there are it's like a lot so of perfect. And this is my comrades. And I will keep on uh, hoping that. Guys, if, if God is not real, then what is that? What is the siren there? Who so put that there? Uh, Who put that there? <laughs> and there's a whole anti-racist movement here. There are a lot of anti-fascists. And this is my comrades. And I will keep on uh, hoping that we will win. So there's an American saying, if you find yourself in a hole, the first thing you do is stop digging, right? The current right-wing government is very anti-immigration, right? The main force of the Swedish left, the social democrats, they are moving in that direction as well. And they're surrounded by a large native population, they will be absorbed somehow. But if the immigrants become too many, then they might very well stay. There's too many care bears in, in government. Their own communities. And the too many. Yeah, in, 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 in certain areas, in certain communities, they are definitely the majority, especially because of segregation. There is one important thing, and that is the changes we see in Swedish politics today. They are the biggest changes in Swedish politics for a century. They are the biggest changes in our <laughs> Oh, <laughs> the fucking editor, like, oh man, there, oh man, there's a fucking siren. What am I gonna do? Structure since Sweden. He started pogging hard, dude. <laughs> a full democracy. I'm quite optimistic <laughs> for the future in Sweden, but it will take a long time. Okay. You have to come back in 10, 15 years and I'll ask me again. And yeah. Is remigration a part of this solution, in your opinion? Yeah, it will be. Uh, firstly, this with, money. with economical incentives, but then we'll be forced also. I'm pretty sure with, about that. When I talk to uh, foreign conservative friends about the changes in Sweden, they often believe this because it's one thing when you have the right 
ruling in Poland or in the US or, or oh, yeah. uh, in Slovenia. Sure. Dude, that was a Polish guy from before. That guy was fucking badass. It's something else entirely when Sweden... The I'm not gonna, I'm not lying, my respect for Poland like went up way high after that video. Supposed progressive socialist paradise turns to the right or even the hard right. Then people really say, wait, what's going on? Is Sweden perhaps a canary in the uh, coal mine? As the world continues to globalize and wealthy <coughs> nations import third world migrants for cheap labor to support their lowering birth rates and in the name of kindness and diversity, we should be asking ourselves, what is a society and culture willing to sacrifice of itself to accommodate those it welcomes? And is a kebab stand in every street corner worth Worth sacrificing a country's entire culture. What do you think? This is damn. That was a crazy video, guys. Guys, yo, hit 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 this video up, dude. This dude, Tyler Oliveira, would like the amazing videos each time. Guys, give you got you guys gotta give this a thumbs up and uh, you know leave a comment, give it a sub. Like really, he really deserves it. Like these are really good videos, really showing us stuff that like a lot of like the media won't won't actually look into.